Well, how is terrorism seen in Islam? On this question, uh, the response to that is that uh, Islam is a religion that itself basically, literally means peace. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was once asked to define a Muslim. Um, and he was asked, uh, who, how do you identify a Muslim? And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said, Al-Muslimu man saliman nasa min lisanihi wa yadihi. That the Muslim is the one who is a source of peace and who, from whose hands and tongue other people, other humans are safe. So on the question on how does Islam look at terrorism, well, Islam um, condemns terrorism. Uh, the, the, the act of terrorism, even before that, there is uh, a phenomenon known as extremism. Islam condemns even the stage before terrorism. Islam condemns the act of extremism. Islam is against extremism in one's views, even in the matter of religion, to be extreme is something that the Prophet Sallallahu has disliked. And there is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu which states, Iyakum wal din. I am warning you in regards to extremism, uh, being extreme in, in the matters of faith, in, in issues of religion. Um, so Islam condemns terrorism, the act of killing innocent people indiscriminately, uh, is extremely appalling. In the Quran states very clearly, "Man qatala nafsan," whoever has killed one individual, "Fakannama qatal nas jamia." It is like that person has killed all humanity, and whoever has saved one person, it is like as he has saved all of humanity. So Islam is against terrorism, uh, like all religions. All religions teach peace. All religions teach uh, humanity and uh, to uphold human rights. And if there are people uh, among Muslims or among any community that um, do not abide by these teachings, then clearly they aren't following their religion. And this is also why uh, the majority of the Muslim world, uh, of the two billion Muslims, the majority, 99%, uh, is extremely against uh, the groups uh, of extremist groups like Daesh, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Taliban, etc. So Islam condemns terrorism in all its forms. Um, why do young people radicalize? Uh, that's another question that was asked. Uh, the answer to that is that, you know, radicalization, it's a very uh, complex phenomenon and there are various different factors that contribute to radicalization. Um, there is a political uh, factor, there is a social factor, there is an economical factor, and there is also a religious factor. And I think it is important that we understand the complexity of radicalization, that there are various different um, you know, things. There is also a psychological factor. Some people are just more prone to radicalization than others. Uh, there is a political factor, absolutely. The politicians need to um, see how some of their policies are pushing people towards um, the narrative of us versus them. Uh, we have to look at um, why is it that certain people, young people born and bred in, uh, in the West do not feel that they belong there and, and, and see everyone as their enemy. Surely uh, somehow we have failed to integrate them. Surely uh, there is a lack of community cohesion. So these are all different social factors that uh, need to be addressed. And another, re another reason uh, why people are prone is obviously, I think the psychological, the social uh, factors are, are extremely important, are more significant, and they push people towards radicalization. And then radicalization is then uh, when people are, are given, you know, justification, religious justification that to harm other people, it's a religious obligation, it's a religious moral duty. I think that's where the religious factor kicks in. And the religious factor is also an important one that needs to be addressed. And it can only be addressed by the, the, the religious leaders, by the religious scholars. And this is why I always say that when it comes to the social, economical, political factors that contribute to radicalization, it is the policy makers, it is, it is the politicians, uh, the people, the media, they have uh, all a role to play in order to minimize uh, radicalization. And also when we talk about the religious factor uh, that, that also contributes to radicalization, it's the religious scholars that have to um, play their important role. Uh, the real message of Islam, 
another question, the final question. The, the real message of Islam is, you know, all religions, whether Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, all religions teach um, humanity, teach, um, you know, peace. And uh, when you look at the founders of these religions, when you look at, uh, you know, Prophet Moses, you look at Jesus Christ, you look at uh, Prophet Muhammad, or you look at uh, Buddha, uh, you see all of them, you know, these religious figures or founders, they, they were all peaceful. They, uh, they, they were bridges. They, they, they acted like bridges between communities. They came to uh, unite people, not to disunite them. And when you look at Islam, particularly, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his life laid down the foundation of a religious plural society, of a society where, which that reflected religious pluralism, the state of Medina. He laid down uh, you know, the, the, the foundation of a society where there is interfaith dialogue, where there is respect of the other, where there is acceptance of diversity. Um, and I think that um, when you want to really you know, find out the message of Islam. The message of Islam is serve humanity. By serving humanity, you can get closer to God, the Creator, and you actually ultimately serve the Creator. There's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is phenomenal. And there is something similar found in the Bible, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that on the day of judgment, God, Allah will speak to one of his servants and he will question him by, by uh, saying, I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was thirsty, you did not quench my thirst. I uh, was naked, uh, clothless, you did not give me clothes. Um, I was cold, you did not give me warmth. And the servant will then su surprisingly ask, uh, you know, Ya Allah, O oh God, O oh my creator, how were you hungry? You are the creator, surely you are uh, above these uh, weaknesses and shortcomings but Allah will say God will then respond by saying uh, there was a servant of mine that was hungry had you fed him it would have been as if you had fed me had you quenched the thirst of a servant of mine it was like you have quenched my thirst so we find this is the essence of Islam uh, the Prophet ﷺ, when he was again uh, I going back to what I said in the beginning he was asked who is a Muslim Mel Muslim, who, who, how do you identify a Muslim? He never responded that a Muslim is the one with uh, the, the longest beard. A Muslim is the one that wears a particular religious dress or the Muslim is the one that fasts in the Ramadan. Uh, he did not respond to that question in this way. He said, a Muslim is the one. Al -Muslim man nasa min wa yadihi. A person from whose hands and tongue other people are, are, are safe. And I guess these two uh, you know, parts of the body that can harm other people. Uh, you can harm them physically, uh, ver you know, physically with your with your with your hands, with your uh, actions. But also, uh, there is something that sometimes it's actually more hurtful, uh, more devastating, um, and, and has a bigger impact. And that is when you hurt someone with uh, with with words. So verbal abuse. Uh, and this is why the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Choose your words wisely." If you are not going to benefit someone, um, then remain silent. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.